This is the final video on superposition, and we are going to look at solving a circuit in the frequency domain. In this particular example, I want to find the current I0, which is traversing through the 72 volt source and the 100 ohm resistor. Note that in this problem, we have three independent sources. The special case about this problem is that each source has a unique frequency. We have cosine 2000T, a sine 4000T, and a DC source. This problem must be solved using superposition. Um, when we convert this problem to the frequency domain to facilitate the analysis, because time domain solving of this problem is pretty difficult, we can only convert to the frequency domain for each unique frequency one at a time. So we must solve this problem three times for each of the unique frequencies, the 2,000 radians per second, 4,000 radians per second, and DC. Okay, so the frequency domain equivalent of the circuit at 2,000 radians per second is shown as follows. So we need to find the equivalent impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 over J omega 1 C. So 1 over J times 2,000 times 20 mu, that's going to be minus J 25 ohms. And likewise for the equivalent impedance of the inductor, J omega L, that will equate to minus, excuse me, positive J 800 ohms. Okay, so now solving, for, solving the circuit for I0, we note that we have two essential nodes, so we can do this with one KCL expression. Um, it would take two KVL expressions if we were to solve it. I'm going to choose the top node here to be ground. I'll call this node V1 bar. And so the KCL at V1 bar is as follows. First, we'll do the current through this path. Note that the 60 ohm and the 100 ohm resistor are in series because this current source is open circuited at 2000 radians per second. So we have V1 minus 0 over 160. Then we have the current through the 80 ohm resistor, which will be given as V1 minus 0 over 80. And then the current through the two impedances and the voltage source. Note that those are in series, so we can rearrange them in any order. So we can consider that as V1 plus 150 minus zero over the sum of the impedance in that path, which will be ZL1 plus ZC1. All that must equal zero. And finally, note that I0 star is given as that first term in the expression, which is V1 bar over 160. Solving this, we get I0 star equal to negative 0 0.0045 plus J0.0047 in rectangular form. That converted to polar form will give us 0. 653 at an angle of 134.1 degrees, and that's units of amps. That'll be easier to convert to the time domain later. Now for part two of the problem, where we're going to consider the second frequency, omega equals 4,000 radians per second. So I've gone ahead and drawn the equivalent circuit in the frequency domain for 4,000 radians per second, converting the current source to a phasor. Since that is a sine, it's going to be converted to six at an angle of negative 90 degrees, so that's converting to cosine first, <clears throat> which in rectangular form is going to be negative J6. Um, the voltage source at the top is shorted, and the DC voltage source on the right is shorted. They both go to zero volts. And note the impedances of the capacitor and the inductor elements are unique to this frequency, and those compute to negative J 12.5 ohms for the capacitor and J 160 ohms for the inductor. 
Okay, so in this part of the problem, we have, <clears throat> when examining whether or not to use nodal or mesh analysis, we have one, two, three, four essential nodes. So that will be three KCL equations in the case of nodal analysis. Three meshes, where one of them is known, so we need to do two KVLs if we do mesh. So I'm going to choose mesh analysis in this case. First mesh is known to be minus J6. Second one I'll call IA. Third one, I'm just going to go ahead and call it I not double star and draw it in the same direction. That way I can find it directly. <clears throat> so I'm finding uh, the KVL expressions now for both of those unknown meshes. So first KVL of A. So minus the impedance of the capacitor times IA would be the voltage dropped across the capacitor minus 80 times IA. Note that in this case I've drawn both of them going the same direction through the 80 ohm resistor. So it's IA plus I naught. And then the voltage dropped across the inductor minus ZL times IA minus negative J6 equals zero. And then our KVL of the rightmost loop. First the voltage dropped across the 100 ohm resistor would be I naught time or 100 times I naught minus 80 times I naught plus IA. They're both going the same direction through the 80 ohm resistor. Minus 60 times I naught. And then negative J6 is also going the same direction through the 60. So plus negative J6 equals 0. Note that I have two equations and two unknowns, so this can be solved. So, so solving this system of two equations, we get I naught equals this term here in rectangular, and we convert that to polar domain, we get 3.53 at an angle of 97.4 degrees, and that's in amperes. So now we have two of our terms, the 2,000 radians per second term and the 4,000 radians per second term. We need one more, and that's the DC component. Okay, our final uh, the, our, and third part of the problem is solving for omega equals zero or the DC condition. So that's for the 72 volt source active and the current and the voltage source with uh, non-zero omega at zero. This circuit vastly simplifies under this condition because as this voltage source is shorted and this current source is open, the inductor and the capacitor are also simplified at DC. And the capacitor is open and the inductor is short, so we're just left over with a single loop with a few resistors in it. So in this problem, we can find I naught triple star directly, noting that I naught is just going around this loop and is based on the series resistance of the three resistors. So it's going to be given a 72 volts divided by the sum of the resistance, which is 100 plus 80 plus 60. I equals V over R. And this works out to be 0 0.3 amperes. And finally, we can write the final solution for I0, and this is in the time domain, so we take our three frequency domain equivalent circuits and convert them. So in part one, the conversion of that solution in polar form to, to time domain would be 0 0.65 times cosine 2000T plus 134.5 times 134.1 degrees. That was in amperes. Part two, for the 4,000 radians per second source, converting from polar to time domain, we get 3.53 cosine 4,000T plus 97.4 degrees. And then finally, our DC solution was 0.3. All that's in amperes. 
and this is our solution. Note that since we had three unique frequencies, we expect three unique terms.